Hey Jeff, you only fans, welcome back to the channel. I'm bringing you something a little different today. We're not working on cars, we're gonna be working on garage. That's right, this is the first of multiple videos where we're gonna be covering the update to my 1970s garage. That's right, I'm gonna tell you all about it and the scope of work up next. have noticed that I haven't had a lot of videos out lately. I used to do almost one a week, but it's more like one a month now because, well, the last couple months I've been busy moving in to my new place with my partner, Christine. I previously lived in a rental, and in a rental, of course, you can't customize things, and you know, based on my cars, I like to customize things, but now I own a house, I'm gonna customize it. So where we're gonna start, of course, is the garage. That's right, and believe it or not, my partner, Christine, is so amazing. She does not want the priority renovation to be our kitchen that has 1970s contact paper on the shelves or our 1980s-like bathroom. She wants the garage renovated just like me. I can't believe it. So I wanna tell you about why this garage sucks and why I wanna improve it. So let's take a look inside. <laughs> So this house was built in like 78 or 79, I think. Uh, and uh, the garage probably hasn't changed much since then. Now, when shopping for a house out in California right now in this hot real estate market, I didn't really get a chance to inspect the house very much. Let's just put it that way. I only got to see the house once. That's right, once. And Christine, she didn't get to see it at all. She had to rely on my videos. So yeah, it's kind of an interesting world. We had to buy the house real quick, put an offer in real quick. So I got to see it once. They had the house staged beautifully. New painted walls, new floors, of course, all that nice, you know, minimalistic furniture. But where were the people that lived here? Where was their stuff? It was all in this garage. You have to try to check out this pile. Now mine would probably look like that too if I had to put my whole house into the garage, but it didn't give me the opportunity to look closely at the garage. So I kind of saw like some silvery ducting work, but I didn't really get to see the rest of the garage. And it's a big deal to me. I know they pile up the garages because they think that most people don't care. I care. I also care about the driveway. Check this out. We live on a sloped hill here and our driveway is not too, you know, steep here to go from the street to the driveway, but it is enough that it's very difficult for the Porsche. I have to do it exactly the right angle, but the Cadillac seems to do okay, only occasionally scraping if I do it wrong. Uh, so, I mean, we have walked away from potential houses because I couldn't get in the driveway. <laughs> It's just how life is for a car person, right? So when we first got the keys to the house, the first thing we saw, of course, was the garage. And we knew immediately something seriously had to change. So let's see what those things are. Right here, folks, is the big elephant in the room. It is our HVAC, our furnace, and our water heater, and these terrible ducts. This was so terrible that I assumed that it was an after uh, market thing, but no, this is how all the houses were built. I've seen some of the other ones in the neighborhood, and yeah, it looks pretty ugly. But it turns out that this system is actually really old. It's over 20 years old. It's pretty much at its end of life. So we thought, you know what, we're gonna have to replace that, and this is a great time to just move the system. That's right, we're gonna take this whole system and we're gonna move it into that crawl space there. We've opened up this hole now. Uh, there was a small door, but there's plenty of room to install the AC system there. And tomorrow they're coming over, they're gonna take this thing out and they're gonna put a whole new, nice, new, more efficient system in there. A new condenser unit, which is gonna be outside on the other side of that window. You can see the condenser line going over the ceiling here. And this is gonna be great because number one, it's gonna free up space. I mean, just look at this return duct down here. That is taking up a ton of space. And of course this, I can totally see me hitting that uh, one late night coming into the garage. So this is gonna be gone. And that means all this ducting is going to be minimized. They're gonna be able to move this ducting up and tight against the wall. And today 
we had our first step in the project and that was having the ceiling drywall removed. We could see these openings up here and these openings allow the new ducting to run between the joists before going into the house and the new ducting is gonna be a little more compact. The same thing applies over here. We're going to push it up tight against the wall. It's gonna be much cleaner and we'll get some new ducts put in. Once all that ducting is tight and smaller against the wall and between the joists, we can build soffits around it so they're not these ugly exposed ducts. Without all this here, it's gonna be a very clean look. But look, we've got this water heater, which so happens to be about 11 years old. If you know anything about water heaters, 11 years old means we're just waiting for something bad to happen here. So it's time to change that too. So we're gonna go with tankless. No, not thankless, tankless water heater. And yes, there's goods and bads to it, but there's goods and bads to these too. And we'll either hang it on the wall here or we're gonna move it outside and it'll be completely bare here. No water heater, no cabinet there, no AC system, no uh, return, it's gonna be great. I'm really looking forward to just that part alone because I've been here for two months and I've only parked the Porsche in here. Sorry, Cadillac. There's just been junk everywhere because I can't properly organize and it's killing me because I love organization. I love simplicity. I even do Marie Kondo in the house. You should see my drawers. They're so well organized. So this I can't stand and I can't wait to have a properly done garage. Having a garage like this already is a blessing, especially where I live in a very expensive San Francisco Bay Area. But uh, my last house, the rental, had a tandem garage. I could fit two cars, but they'd be end to end. And there was no room to work on either side of the car if I really wanted to work on a special project. And now I've got that space, so that's great. So as I said, the first thing that's been done already, and that was today, is they removed all the drywall on the ceiling, and we're actually gonna remove or at least refinish all the drywall in the rest of the garage here, but we're also going to get rid of this window. We may change this door to open outward so it doesn't have to be uh, open space over here. I can actually do something with the space, which will probably be some nice storage cabinets. We will probably upgrade the flooring at some point, and of course, Everything will be enclosed in new drywall, painted, uh, new electrical and lighting. It's gonna be fabulous. And you may have noticed this trend in social media and YouTube, people are doing their garage renovations, the rebuilds, they're making the ultimate garage. And although this isn't exactly my dream garage, I'm so happy to have it. And part of that is I'm gonna have a pressure washer station built right into this area, uh, you know, with uh, plumbing and a hose reel and such so I can properly wash my car out here in the driveway. For the last couple years, I've been using this cheap Sunjo pressure washer and it's about time to have a proper setup. So that's gonna be great. What else? There is one more pipe that will be left over and it's this flue. Unfortunately, it's got asbestos tape on it. Thankfully, that's the only bit of asbestos around in this house. So that's gonna have to be properly removed, but with the water heater gone and the HVAC system moved over into the crawl space, we're not gonna need that. So it's gonna be a very nice clean ceiling. And that AC condenser line I showed you, that was right across all the drywall. Now we're gonna tuck it up into the rafters here and then seal it in with drywall. So again, clean look, it's gonna be nice. By the way, if you're wondering what the heck this thing is flopping around, this is our mail catcher because the door has a slot on it and the mail goes in and it goes into that little pocket. So even when you open the garage door, it still hangs in there and your mail isn't all over the floor here. So that's pretty cool, but I'm gonna have to make a nicer system or maybe just put a mailbox outside. Let's close the garage. I wanna show you something else. Now where the garage door was, this is open space up here. Look at that. That's right, there is enough space up here to create some platforms and sort of an attic area. I don't think I'm gonna completely enclose it in. I kinda of like this open space, but at least put some platforms. You can see they've made some rudimentary shelves. I'm storing car parts like a splitter and uh, it's a under panel for the Cadillac. And then over here on this side, I've got my TV box. By the way, how many of you guys save your TV box? I mean. It was really helpful when I moved, but I'm hoping not to move for like 10 years and maybe by then have a, a new TV, I don't know. So tell me in the comments below, should I keep the TV box in storage or just get rid of it? What do you think? We'll eventually have a platform up here and I don't need stairs or anything, I'll just use the ladder, but we can store more stuff. Okay, that doesn't actually sound appealing to me, storing more stuff. We don't have a lot of stuff. We don't have crazy Christmas decorations or anything, So, but at least we can get some big items kind of out of the way there. Unfortunately, both sides of the garage have these 
buttresses here, but they're load bearing, so I can't get rid of them. So it kind of ruins some of the clean wall look, but either way, boy, am I happy to have a space like this. It's been a long time since I had a two car garage. Let's get some more light in here. <laughs> So I hope you'll join me on this journey. It'll be a few videos long where we go through each of the steps. The next video, of course, is gonna be the process of them moving this air conditioning. I'm not gonna be around to do a lot of that footage, but I'm gonna show you what occurs, uh, and then we'll get on to the rest of the renovation. So I hope you're interested. I definitely got plenty of inspiration from Andrew from 911 South. You should check out his YouTube channel, especially if you're a Porsche fan, he's got some cool content. And of course, I follow Obsessed Garage, and you know, makes you wanna improve everything in your garage life. So if if you're excited to go on this journey with me, keep watching out for future videos. Uh, and of course, subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when those videos come out. Thanks so much for watching the Jeff Fioli channel. We'll see you next time.